There are a hundred other videos that people have made on wind bombs, including speedrunners and people who understand them decently well. That's why when I was thinking of making this video, I was going to focus entirely on more advanced techniques and efficient applications of them in speedruns. However, I've seen too many people, including top runners, forgetting some basic stuff when executing even standard front hot wind bombs. And since this will probably come up, yes, they are called wind bombs. Almost every speedrunner, and the person who found the trick, calls them wind bombs except like five people. So considering that, I've decided to do a comprehensive guide on them, going over basic wind bombs, advanced wind bombs, and efficient use of them in speedruns. I'm going to split these into three separate videos, so if you're watching this one and thinking it's all old news, then you can jump ahead to one of the next two videos. But I can almost guarantee you there will be at least one thing I'm going to mention in this video that you've either forgotten, overlooked, or just didn't know. Now that I'm starting from the beginning, I have to go over the formality of what is a wind bomb. It's a trick discovered back in September 2019 by Sato Gashi that involves using bombs in bullet time to propel link varying distances, from clearing a tiny gap to traversing an entire map area in one launch. As you can imagine, such an easy and versatile trick completely breaks this game and absolutely trivializes almost every shrine. As soon as this was found, it completely took over speedruns and made using horses, stasis launches, flying machine, and multiple other movement options invalid. As for how it works, you place the bombs in such a way that the explosion from the furthest bomb sends the closest bomb into Link during bullet time. This impact forces you out of bullet time and sends Link flying at a speed relative to the velocity of the bombs that impacted you. Before I jump into how to even perform a wind bomb, I want to go over some quick info to keep in mind before you can do one. If done correctly, Link will always only take one heart of damage. Bombs plus and armor don't affect this whatsoever, it's always one heart of damage. If done incorrectly, you'll take whatever the full damage of a bomb is. Bombs plus and armor do affect this. So while practicing, you might want to wear whatever your highest armor rating is to reduce the failure damage to only a quarter heart. Bombs plus might do more damage from a failure, but you can still reduce its damage to a quarter heart, and the quicker cooldown will let you practice way faster, as it's a 3 second wait for a bomb to come back compared to a 6 second wait. And two quick notes for speedrunning. If you're doing segmented practice for a speedrun and have bombs plus, you should always keep in mind that what you're practicing needs to have a longer cooldown on bombs accounted for. And if you fail a wind bomb and take full damage when you have three maximum hearts, you'll survive due to one shot protection. But three hearts when you have four or more maximum will give you a game over. Alright, let's start with the three types of beginner wind bombs. We have standard front hot wind bombs, backflip wind bombs, and mid-air wind bombs. Obviously there's no official classification of a wind bomb's difficulty, but these are probably the wind bombs that are easiest to perform with the least amount of nuance. Let's begin with standard front hot wind bombs. These are one of the easiest to learn and perform. They are fundamental to understanding wind bombs in general and the further precise variations. They give more height than Rivali's Gale while giving you decent forward momentum, are the fastest to set up and can easily be done anywhere you can get into bullet time. To perform a standard front hot wind bomb you want to approach the edge of any ledge you can get into bullet time from. Make sure you have the round bomb selected in the rune menu. Face link to a cardinal or ordinal direction. Hold ZL, which is very important by the way so I'll say it again. Hold ZL, jump forward, immediately press L to drop a bomb, immediately tap ZR to enter bullet time, do not hold it. D-pad up to switch to the square bomb. Press L to place it, D-pad up to switch to the round bomb, press L to detonate the round bomb, and if you did all of that correctly you'll send Link flying and have done a standard front hot wind bomb. While this might seem like a lot of quick inputs, it becomes a lot easier if you break it down into two halves. Jumping from the ledge, dropping the round bomb and entering bullet time as the first half, and placing the square and detonating as the second half. If you can place your first bomb well and enter bullet time, you've done the difficult part of this type of wind bomb and the rest is just dropping a second bomb and detonating. Holding D-pad up while you're switching to give yourself time to think about the inputs can also help when first learning. If you didn't launch but only took one heart of damage, you still did the inputs correctly, but some other aspects hindered the launch. Keep watching for the common mistakes and one of them will fix your problem. So you've been following the explanation correctly but you're still failing to launch. I'll go over a few reasons why that might have happened. 
The most common is bad bomb placement. To get the best idea of how your bombs should align, you can turn the camera to the side to clearly see how they line up and their distance from each other and link. The round bomb placement is the most important out of the two, as it's the one you have the most control over. Too late and the square won't be sent into link, you'll take the full damage from the bombs and won't go anywhere. Too early and you'll have a much weaker launch. If your only goal is to get any kind of launch out of these wind bombs, then late is the worst of the two, as you won't get anything compared to the weak launch of an early bomb. So try to be on the early side if you just want to get a launch. However, there are situations where getting this weak launch can be worse than no launch at all. There's a sweet spot between these two that you want to get every single time to get the best launch you can. Not holding ZL. There's not much to explain here. Just hold ZL. You get a normalized front hop from this that you need every single time. Speed cap and dead angles. While you're in the ragdoll state from launching, you can be traveling too quickly, which has generally been dubbed as speed cap by the speedrunning community. This is an incredibly annoying part of wind bombs that needs to be worked around and will almost entirely be the source of any failures once you're more adept at wind bombs. While we're not entirely sure why this happens, there's a common theory I'll roughly explain that Link has both a body and soul. So essentially there are two parts of Link his physical body and an invisible one, or the soul, that both interact differently. The easiest way to see this is when Mipha's Grace activates when you're travelling at high speed in ragdoll state. When this soul gets separated too far from Link's physical body, or something extreme happens to it, like excessive rotation, all of your momentum will be cancelled. Exclusive to front hot wind bombs is a type of speed cap called a dead angle. Since the square bomb will always spawn facing perfect north in midair, it can impact Link at multiple angles dependent upon how you initially aimed. Cleanly impacting one of the faces or the corner of the bomb will work every time, but angles that are off ordinal will either cause an excess of speed or rotation to the soul. A dead angle happens due to launching the square bomb into Link at any of these angles while using standard front up bomb placement and timing. A dead angle is not a guarantee, however the chance becomes higher as you tend more towards these angles. In short, pay attention to how you're facing. Cardinal and ordinal angles work great. Avoid these angles. Lag stopping. In places of a lot of lag, you can sometimes perform the wind bomb correctly, begin to launch, but then rubber band while you're in the ragdoll state before you can pull the paraglider. A second type of lag stopping, which is much more common, occurs when you first enter bullet time. It can stifle launches from giving you a weak launch to giving no launch at all. In these two clips, you can see that in a lag free area like the desert, the game stays at 30 frames per second, whereas in Kakariko, the frame rate dips much lower and will result in a failed launch. You can get around this by pointing the camera up or down to reduce the amount of objects on the screen. Looking down is preferred as you can still see your bombs and link, but in some places looking down isn't enough lag reduction and looking straight up is needed. Before I move on to backflip wind bombs, there are some small additions and tips that I want to add. Cardinals will give more height and less speed, while ordinals are the opposite. You might have heard that you should use stamina as the visual cue to place your second bomb or launch, but you can actually go as fast as you want after placing the second bomb. It all depends on if you place your first bomb correctly. A late first bomb can be corrected with a late second bomb, which is where the visual cue originated from, but this takes extra time and stamina that could be saved. In places where you can't see your minimap, you can jump and spawn the square bomb to see where the cardinal directions are. If you fail a wind bomb, always check both bombs are detonated before you try again as frequently the bomb you attempted to launch into Link won't have exploded and instead been sent some distance away, but still within range to not despawn. The closer you come to a dead angle, the faster you will go, but then you're trading speed for consistency. Next up is backflip wind bombs. These are also easy to learn, but understanding the spacing required between bombs goes a long way in perfecting these. Backflip wind bombs give little height, but a lot of horizontal speed, are the longest to set up and can be done anywhere you can backflip to enter bullet time. To perform a backflip wind bomb, you want to be on top of something you can backflip from to enter bullet time that is shorter than Link. Hold ZL the entire time, backflip twice and place a square bomb. Hop forward twice again to return to your initial position. Backflip. Tap ZR to enter bullet time mid backflip, D-pad up to switch to round bomb, press L to place, D-pad up to switch to square bomb, press L to detonate. Performed correctly it will give you a launch at a low height with a lot of speed. 
Unlike front hops, you can slow down your inputs a lot for this, as backflips involve waiting to correctly place bombs, instead of trying to get your inputs done as fast as possible. Again, turning your camera to the side will help you a lot, so you can see how your bombs align with Link. So now let's go over some common points of failure with backflip wind bombs and how to troubleshoot them. As with front hops, the most common point of failure with backflip wind bombs is bad bomb placement. If you've done the double backflip setup, then your square bomb will be fine, but your round bomb will either be too late or too early. Both of these will result in the round bomb rolling off Link and taking the full bomb damage from the square. This will take some practice to fully understand what spacing is required, but make sure your bombs look less like these two clips. And more like this one. Tying into the previous point is your timing to enter bullet time. Press the R too early and you have to wait for a long time to be able to place the round bomb for a successful launch. Press the R too late and you won't enter bullet time at all. The higher the ledge you jump from is, the longer you want to wait to enter bullet time. Speed cap and leg stopping again appear in these wind bombs as a cause for failure, but much less frequently, with speed cap occurring only in the lowest and fastest launches. The same fix mentioned earlier applies for leg stifling the initial launch, looking either down or up in the extreme leg cases. Probably the least common mistake is misalignment of the bombs to link, so they don't impact in a straight line, which might sound familiar by now, but this will either stifle your launch or give you no launch at all. By doing the double backflip method, you are almost guaranteed to be online with the bombs, but rushing the setup or grabbing onto weird ledges can sometimes set Link to the side. Okay, now for the more additions and tips on backflip wind bombs. Once you get backflip wind bombs down and understand the bomb spacing, the double backflip setup isn't completely required and can be ignored if you know where to place the square bomb. I'll frequently look for visual cues in places where a backflip is the best option to reduce the amount of time the setup takes. For very small ledges that need an immediate ZR press to enter bullet time, you can parry twice after the two backflips to place the bomb slightly closer and allow you to immediately place the round bomb and detonate. For higher ledges, you can place the bomb further back than two backflips so you don't have to wait in bullet time for an extended time to launch. There's no easy setup for this however and will take a decent understanding of ideal bomb spacing. Delaying bullet time entry as much as possible is ideal for minimal stamina usage and time required to set up the wind bomb. Waiting until the absolute end of the window to place your round bomb can give you a much lower trajectory, and conversely, the absolute beginning of the window will give you a higher trajectory. So put simpler, early round bomb is high and slow, late round bomb is low and fast. Dead angles don't apply at all to backflips, as Link is being impacted by the round bomb, so you can freely aim at wherever you want to go. The last of what I'd consider beginner wind bombs is mid-airs. To me these are somewhat harder than the previous two, as there's no easy setup and both wind bombs need to be placed well, instead of having one already set up, but others have found mid-airs the easiest, so it seems to differ from person to person. There are two common methods for consistently performing mid-air wind bombs. First, I'll go over the method I use. From gliding you want to come to a complete standstill and be in a neutral gliding position. Drop the round bomb and push forward at the same time. Enter bullet time after a short delay. Switch to square bomb, drop and detonate straight away. The second method involves gliding at the regular max speed, without any speed boost from any kind of launch or BTB. Releasing the stick to neutral, then following the same set of inputs as the previous method. Drop round bomb, small delay, enter bullet time, switch bombs, drop square and detonate. I'm not the best at this method as I feel the first one gives the best control of a bomb placement and can be initiated quicker, as it's easier to instantly reset to neutral over max regular gliding speed. I know most runners use the first method, but the only one I can think of right now that uses the second is Limb Cube. As with almost every other wind bomb, turning camera to the side helps a lot so you can easily see the bomb placement. For mid-air wind bombs you're attempting to emulate the bomb's positions from standard front hot wind bombs. 
which can give varying results in terms of velocity until you've really got the timings down, ranging from almost entirely high. to send you straight forward, so I'd advise learning front hop wind bombs first so you can exactly see how the bombs should line up. Since you're emulating the position of the bombs from the standard front hop wind bomb, almost exactly the same reasons for failure apply here. So go over some of those again if you're struggling, which again is why I want to stress learning those first. The timing of your bombs is incredibly important for mid airs and will almost always be your source of failure, so don't worry if they take some time to get down, as you're going to have to fail them many times before you really understand the timings. And finally, small additions I want to add for mid airs. You can actually drop the bombs in either order, but the timing will be different, and round first will always give stronger launches. Whilst dead angles can occur, they are much less common as you have to perfectly replicate the bomb's positions from a standard front hot wind bomb. If you drop your first bomb early and notice, you can wait in bullet time for it to fall into a better place. However, this takes up a lot of stamina, so practicing with max stamina is advised. In almost all categories in a speedrun scenario, you will only have one wheel of stamina. So while this is good in practice to help recognize bomb spacing, you want to get midairs down to as little stamina used as possible. Always make sure both bombs are detonated and available to use. If you need to quickly face a direction while gliding, you can turn your camera towards that direction, use throw aim by holding R, pressing B to drop glider, letting Link turn from the throw aim, then pulling glider again with X. You can also turn with bullet time, but this consumes much more stamina and should only be done if you need to conserve all possible height. These are incredibly versatile once you're adept at them, as they can save failed BTBs. Give you that little extra distance you need. Or allow you to wind bomb absolutely anywhere. There was a fourth type of wind bomb I was going to include in this video, but I think due to its variation, it's better included in the next video, detailing more advanced wind bombs. But that about does it for basic wind bombs. Hopefully if you cover everything outlined in this video, then you should be all set for wind bombing wherever and whenever.